Let's talk a little bit. I'm not going to keep you a long time. I, I haven't been away from y'all that long, have I? I'm not going to keep you a long time. Amen. Just long enough to repeat to you what the Lord is whispering in my ear. When God get through, I'll be through. Amen. Amen. But I just want you to know I'm glad to be here. I want to uh, honor this great theme that you have, celebrating the laborers that dwell among us. Amen. And that is something we should do. We spend so much time celebrating everything else. It's football season now. Everybody's screaming for a team that they don't own, never played on. And most of us haven't even been to a live game, but we've been talking football all uh, But here we are with the man of God with us right in the house. We want to be excited just because we can go over there and say, well, there he is right there. Amen. That's the one that preached me through, the one that prayed me through. Amen. This great scripture that you chose is, is in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, and 13. Uh, it says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. That, that's great reading. Now, my father, who taught me uh, all I know about preaching, said that when somebody takes their time and labors over a theme and a scripture, he says, don't ignore it, but say something about it. Amen. So now, that's not my sermon scriptures, but I do want you to know that after these folk give so much of themselves for your sake, it ought to be easy for us to esteem them highly. Uh, we don't understand sometimes when you see folk come in and you open the door for your pastor, you ought to. And when you're giving them the high seat, you should. Amen. I don't want to get off into detail, but you ought to find a way very often to do something kind, nice, and loving for your set angel in the house. You trying to hold them up, you holding up your breakthrough. You trying to get blessed, you start blessing them. Every time you see them, do something to bless them and see what God bless you. Amen. Now turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Amen. And let me tell you a few more things. Because I don't think y'all want to stay as long as I want to be here. Uh, and I don't know if that's a good thing, but we're just going to cooperate. Can you find 2 Corinthians chapter 12? Let me see what I want to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm like somebody else. I can't, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I, I ain't calling the name. I ain't upset with me. I ain't talking to <laughs> No, we play. I love her. I love her. Amen. It was just that you ain't like you can see when you came. So, I understand what you're going through. Amen. Amen. I don't know if I'm going to use this word or not. Can I change up? Can I change up? Let me, let me go into Ezekiel. Go way over there. Amen. Amen. I, I've been doing this all day. The Lord has been pulling out so much word that, that I can't put it all into one flow. So I want to preach all of it, but that's not possible. So let me talk about this. Ezekiel chapter 3. Look at verse 17. You see if your Bible then says, Son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest them not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will be required at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked and turn, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Y'all in here. 
Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness to commit iniquity and lay a stumbling block, I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will be required at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man uh, that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, and also thou hast delivered thy soul. Your Bible reading that way. Let's use as a thought this evening a pastor's heart, a pastor's assignment. You all right? Sit down and say a pastor's heart, a pastor's assignment. Now before I run too much, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 15 says, And I will very gladly spin and be spent for you, though more abundantly, I love you, the less I be loved. Right. Now, I think that hmm, we live in the most chaotic time in modern history. I look around and I, and I see what's going on and, and, I, and I shake my head sometimes because I don't understand how so much foolishness is going on in the midst of supposedly wise people. And more than I've ever seen in my lifetime or in this generation anyhow, everything is just chaotic. Everything is just on the edge of destruction. Uh, you look at their wars everywhere. But we're not troubled because didn't the Bible say there be wars and rumors of war? We look around and we see sickness everywhere. And, and I tried to explain this morning why they said pestilence because there will be new diseases that confound the doctors. They can't figure out what's wrong with you. And isn't it fascinating that with all this knowledge and education now, the doctors won't readily tell you, I just don't know. But we're not troubled because the Bible said it would come to pass. Matthew kept on teaching us around that 24th chapter and said we will learn how to betray one another. And I know that there was a day. I've been in church all my life. I'm a PK. I've been in church. Church is what I know. Church is where I've been. Church is where I am. Church is where I want to go. There was a time in church when folk would come to a body and say, I want to be a part. Uh, they did it like marriage until them do us part. When we come to church now, and if you don't like my shoes, I just go find me another church. I go down the mount like my shoes, and I worship down there. And we will betray one another. There's so much deceit in the world. And, and you know, we would panic and go to pieces, but a merciful God has always in advance made a way out of our trouble. Yeah. A merciful God has always established a path of freedom for his children. Yeah. That no matter what it looked like, no matter what you're going through, if you put your trust in the Lord, yeah. I declare everything will be all right. Yeah. I don't just stop right there, but I declare there's testimony in this room right now. That you did a place that you didn't know whether you were coming out or not. But seemed like at the very second you felt like giving up, God showed up. Did the Lord bring you out? I was like, I have 14 minutes. And the Lord will bring you out. And he'll do it every time. And we're not worried about what the enemy might say. Because God is on our side. Can you preach to me and say, He will make a way for you? Uh, that's the kind of God we serve. He will make a way for you. Well, one of the particular ways He made, we are celebrating on this afternoon. Uh, God gave us pastors. 
And so now we'll never I'm highly opinionated. I, I, I say, well, then who was counseling you? And he started naming the organization that he'd go to. And he said, when we get there, you have to stand up and say, my name is Ben Wood and I'm an addict. I said, well, that's what's wrong. You <laughs> <laughs> see, the father lets you know that you can do that all in your son. And that's what you are. So I said, when you go, if you go back, you tell him your name, but you can't say, but I am not an addict.
leave here like we came. So we're going to tell the expert, boy, I'm all right. You, you need to come get about seven and more treatments. I'm all right. You need to come on and proclaim what you are. I am and you no, know I'm not. I'm in the middle. I've been set free. How you been set free? Well, I suddenly even found more of the self. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. The Holy Ghost said, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And I receive that word. So I'm not coming up in here speaking negativity over myself. That's the devil's plan for bondage. Thank you. 